What's that? We're a chill group. <laughs> okay. Well, so this is not a drill. This was an actual event that I happened to walk into uh, as the lead forecaster the morning of our evacuation, which if some of you haven't heard before, um, in March this year, Nebraska and Western Iowa experienced the costliest natural disaster in our documented history. Um, we had a levee breach upstream, and I'll go through kind of an overview of what um, happened and then some key findings. So why am I telling this story? Because we all have stories to tell, right? Um, true story, called Hastings and said, we have a problem. <laughs> Heads up, well, you might have everything of ours. The sky was extremely blue that day, for those of you blue sky fans. Um, we came up with some key findings, some best practices. So as I go through this, for you, those of you not in the weather service, I will try to avoid the acronyms, and, but it, a lot of it's geared towards weather service. But think of yourselves having to evacuate your office within a few minutes. Um, let's say, you know, it might not be a flood because maybe your office is not in a floodplain. Uh, maybe it's a tornado. Uh, maybe it's, you know, a wildfire, what have you. Uh, I grabbed a timeline from the, thank you, Papio NRD, who is our um, resource district, and they have a lot of levees in our area, and we were one of our core partners. And so things were getting really, it was a slow moving disaster, let me put it that way. Um, it wasn't like all of a sudden here's, you know, a hook echo and you have to move. Uh, this was a very slow moving disaster. I'm not going to get into the meteorology of it. However, uh, it was a lot of record snowfall on frozen ground and then we had rain and then things just started kind of happening all at once. But this is from their logs and we have the Platte River that goes about two miles by our office which dumps into the Missouri eventually south of Omaha by Offutt Air Force Base. And the Platte River is very susceptible to ice jams and so we had a huge ice pack that year this year and that's kind of what um, this timeline is so they were going to dynamite potentially dynamite and blow up which is a, kind of a cool process um, some vet that has this dynamite business and flies a helicopter and drops dynamite on the flat so we had just had a um, so the Spencer Dam up to our northwest had broke and so things are really starting to um, Escalate. Let me say that that way. Uh, the Papio NRD flies the Platte River the morning of Thursday, and the ice is moving out. But record um, flow. We're getting really high flows uh, into the Missouri. Ice jam events over. So guards not down, but you know, whew, we're we're out of the ice jam um, worries. Well. We're starting to see significant flood water and ice over top other levees downstream. And this bottom one here is kind of important. Um, at 11.30 Thursday night, the NRD observes the Platte River overtopping uh, the levee, Union Dyke, which is, up, which is two miles down the road. But WFO Omaha has no idea. We are sending, uh, our MIC was working the midnight shift and she and one of the uh, new hires, uh, in fact, he was only there a couple weeks, I think, um, were down at the bridge in the dark, dropping a wire weight. Um, it was a very busy shift, but in the morning, um, the Missouri and Platte are rising rapidly. Levees now are breaking just everywhere. Um, but remember, it was approximately 11.30 the night before <laughs> that water was overtopping the levee upstream from the office. So at some point, Union Dyke, this is the second to the bottom, breaches early in the morning just um, north of, northwest of the office, and floodwaters are streaming towards the office. Now, this isn't something you can see from the road. It's, it's way in on the sand and gravel property. So we noticed things, particularly um, the leaving of mid shift and the incoming day shift. 
you know when you're in your office and you feel just safe it's like home you know you're fairly safe things seem quite normal even though it can be extremely chaotic outside that was you know, sort of the environment walking into the office when I came in at 9 and I had just come through flood water and it's rising and things around the office weren't normal like the big steel plant across the street was closed up they employ 4,000 employees or so <laughs> their doors were shut their gates were shut they had flood they had sandbags up so this is upstream yet of our office so our office would be is there a laser on here Yay. Okay, so our office is right here on this screen, but upstream, this is the city of Fremont, which happened to be cut off eventually, but we have levees all along this river that have breached. And so our, you know, we're watching the wire weight, we're, you know, watching um, what's happening with the graph. However, all this water is now spreading. <laughs> out and into the lowest point. So here's a, like a overview, here's the office right here. And this is about seven miles as the crow flies of where the levee breach was. So overnight in the dark, all this water was, was coming towards the office. So when we called <laughs> Hastings, said so we have a problem. Um, let me, this is actually that day on when I was leaving. Uh, it's a blue sky day, right? <laughs> um, even though we all, even Hastings was in flood and, and had several rivers in flood, um, it was a blue sky day, and and so I called back and I said, "This is it. We're out." Um, we probably didn't hit the peak because of because of the levee uh, breaches, but so at the same time we said. We're not staying here. There's no way. Our rescuers had been out all night rescuing people. Um, they were tired. They were friends of ours, and they're exhausted. They've been working nonstop for two days trying to get people out of their flooded homes. So, office is here. Most everybody lives to the, to the east of the office. This is Omaha over here. Um, our roads... Well, what, what's going on here is you have the Platte River, and then we have the Elkhorn River, and they were essentially becoming one. It's named Valley for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, these roads were quickly becoming cut off. So you have everybody that lives west of the Omaha Metro is now unable to get home. Our alternate location site number one is in Valley, which the mayor has asked everybody to leave. So <laughs> that's not an option. Our second site is right over here. It's off my map. So you can see that if one were to go our normal routes home, it's not, it's not gonna work. So we ended up having to take um, a, the long way, and I have some pictures of that here coming up too. All right, here's a picture. This is our alternate location. You can see these. this would be the main road in. There was no way that was gonna happen. So have a plan B is our point here. Um, Responsibility, number one was our people, and when we decided it's, it's go time, uh, electronics have to be shut down in a proper order, people have to be taken care of, uh, there's a process that we initiate, we call, we, um, through the NOAA ENS, how we notify, so the person working that desk didn't know the password, so that was wasted time there. Thank goodness for text messages and having your staff members phone numbers in your in your phone because that saved us sent out a mass text people that were coming into work we sent you know kept them out accounted for everyone by unit and where they were going um, and then started this list of what needs to be done and checking it off as we leave second responsibility was property and our vehicles and our the new guy, <laughs> when we were going through everything, he's like, what can I do, what can I do? And, and so the ESA was asking us, he's like, we can replace cables. And so we were pulling cables out of the AWIPS workstations, computers, and moving them up off the floor. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been through a flood before. This was my third flood, unfortunately. So <laughs> 
pr past practice told, you know, move everything up. And um, government vehicles were an, a bit of an issue. We were going to try to move them to higher ground. However, getting to higher ground was going to mean we weren't coming back to the office because uh, the roads were closed. So uh, we decided to move them to the highest area, which was by our inflation shelter out there. This is an actual picture video, I guess I took. This is the new guy. <laughs> this is Taylor. Uh, he's moving our co-op files and our historical records that are on the, on the bottom um, filing cabinet up on top, of the, on top of the cubicle. And then this is when AWIPS was, this is our ESA Larry, that's when AWIPS was completely shut down and then power off. So I took, because I video everything because I have kids, you know how that goes. <laughs> So this is a little video. Okay. All right, everything's off the floor. <laughs> we are just waiting on these rivers to go out, and they're going to show you what's down in the power. Right. Comes our MIC. She's been up forever at this point, but had all the personal records, personnel records she needed. That's another thing. We um, sent out a mass text. Had, some, had a couple minutes, what does anybody need? Do you have anything here at the office that you can't live without type thing? Keep that in mind too, if you're leaving stuff at the office, uh, it, it might not be able to uh, return. So this is part of the roadway. Turn around, don't drown, right? But it, was, it wasn't it was that bad yet. <laughs> <laughs> do as I say it, not as I do. <laughs> but it, the crazy thing about this event it was that it was it was flowing. I mean, this water was flowing for a flat valley. It was really moving fast. Um, here is roads that were being closed. I mean, it was just like it was slow, but then again, it happened all at once. And so, um, just trying to navigate our ways around this bridge. I mean, this is what roads eventually started looking like because of that flowing water. Um, Actually, one point I was really scared. This was the scary part. This is what this looks like now, or it actually just opened like last week. Um, but traffic, this was the only way into Omaha and traffic was backed up. The, the first responders were super busy um, and stretched thin too, so they couldn't get roads closed off fast enough. And so I was trapped, I call it, on this bridge for about three minutes, which seemed like an eternity. And I'm like, this is how I'm gonna die. But made it. Um, this was when we had just left our office, the news KTV. Real show. quickly here. Before we hightail it out of here, uh, this cruiser has to keep moving because, as you can see, water just keeps coming over here. We're right across from the Valmont plant, which is now looking like it's completely underwater. This intersection, you see that stop sign right there? That was completely dry literally eight minutes ago. I mean, we pulled up here and thought this was a safe place to be, you know, no water around us. And now look at this. In a course of eight minutes, that's how quickly this water is flowing. So those flash flood warnings right now that they're putting out there for Valley, for all those areas between the Elkhorn River and the Flat River, it is very real. This water rises in a matter of a couple minutes and it will overtake your property. I have never in my life seen anything like this. So we're gonna head out. There's the cruiser blocking off westbound access to Ida. Again, this is 288th and Ida Street. And this flooded in a matter of minutes. It was completely dry less than 10 minutes ago. So we're gonna get out of here and find a safer place to be. But I just wanted to show you guys that because this is serious. They put out these flash flood warnings and they're serious and you need to take them seriously. No sirens. <laughs> All right, so, oh, just one more quick little. This is from the office. Someone took a drone. I should put a credit to whoever this was. I don't remember. Um, everything in our office survived. We were two inches away from hitting the subfloor. So we made it. Yay. Um, what we did afterwards, it's kind of a blur, but um, Hastings took everything, bless their hearts, and I think you guys are going to talk about that a little bit too. We also invaded, uh, for our second alternate place, was the... Uh, NRD and the USDA was housed here because they're another federal agency, so we interrupted their time. Um, and they were busy. They had uh, producers that were losing hundreds and hundreds of head of, of livestock, and so they were busy trying to figure out things out for producers and, and talk them off the ledge to some degree. But 
we ran the administrative um, things out of this office, did social media and so forth. And then, of course, as everyone's heard, we, we were at the Hastings office. They graciously accepted us. And the cultural differences um, was a good kind of segue because we in Valley have a different culture than if you were to you know jump into your uh, neighboring office. It's It all works out. We all do the same thing. But you know, there's differences. And, and we're all impacted a little differently. Social media was huge. People, we, we they really had our backs, and this is why it was a really good thing to you know have our social media followers. Um, they were doing anything they could to to help us out too. Going back home was um, it's a process. So shutting things down is a process, just like going back home is a process. And so this was our driveway into this was really you know heavy flowing water, and so access to the building was limited I guess you could say we got porta potties out right away but we didn't want to be a nuisance on the local utilities either when they're trying to get everything because the whole town of Valley flooded uh, this is our upper inflation shelter this is a new channel that we need to name I think we should have naming rights <laughs> this is a sand pit lake for those of you not familiar with that area they dig <laughs> sand in a lake forms and people build million dollar homes around it um, but now we have this new channel and so these are about, these are deep, as deep as I am, which I'm around five feet. So it was flowing pretty good, but um, saved, we saved everything. So key findings real quick. Uh, we were not notified of the levee breach, never. Not our emergency management, not the Papio NRD. I don't blame them. Everyone just got inundated at once and we just um, sort of went into reactive mode to a degree, but that's where follow-ups and the communication starts now. The NOAA ENS notification failed and the person that was supposed to be in charge of that didn't know the password and so there was precious minutes wasted there. Again, your cell phones for people who, you know, if you have your staff on your cell phones, that's a great way to, to be uh, keeping communication. This one I didn't know. We were wasting time trying to figure out how to forward our phones to our little office cell phone. Turns out once the power's off, our phones don't work at all. Nope, no forwarding capabilities. Electronics staff was on site to power everything down properly. So had they not been there, that would have been a, a long process. So we, I would have had no idea. I mean, I'm sure it's in a manual somewhere, but having them there was a lifesaver. Um, AWIPS procedures, tools, bundles, perspectives. So when I walked into Hastings office, luckily I got had somewhere to go, right? <laughs> They, uh, my, my procedure, I, it was like starting from day one on AWIPS again. So that was a struggle. Um, I borrowed a bunch of their procedures, but uh, if you guys keep all your stuff on a drive, a hard drive, or the drives at the office, you won't have that. <laughs> FYI, the cloud is amazing. Climate doesn't work on, on backup. And this was a big one. I was sort of in, under the impression that weather, the weather radio is kind of dying in my area. Um, but it turns out, because once we powered down, there's no backup for ra weather radio. Once we powered down, that was it. And so we had most of our calls and most of our um, people were upset about the weather radio being down. And I don't blame them. Uh, I'll skip some of these because I am almost out of red. Let's see. <laughs> Employee flexibility. If we didn't have any government vehicles to drive to do flood surveys, to go to Hastings, to go to the Papu NRD, so having staff that was flexible and, and didn't mind um, changing at the spur of the moment on things was, was key. Uh, da, 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 da. It, having a supervisor, oh, Brian Bargenbrook was down at Sioux School, or I know there's a better name for it than that. <laughs> but he was able to help in The Rock and he ran a bunch of our administrative things at The Rock and, and uh, was super, super beneficial to have him there. Um, we don't have an ASA, and so the administrative functions were tough. Travel orders, we would get a wrong code, and, and then it had to be redone. And it was just a lot when you have mass chaos going on eventually. So, All right, let's go to best practices for YAL. Include an alternate evacuation route in the event road access is cut off. Think of a tornado blowing down trees, uh, power lines on your route out. Um, Office cell phone was a lifesaver and our only way besides our personal cell phones for others to get in contact with us. 
And move government computers, vehicles, paper, historical records to higher ground while waiting to power down equipment. So we were using our time wisely. And then we also, the ROC set up a uh, OAX DSS chat room, lifesaver. That way we could all communicate with each other. We knew who was on first, who was on second. Oh, I made it. <laughs> we have a couple minutes if anybody uh, had any questions. All right, uh, All right, and we're going to break for about five minutes, so if anybody needs to use the restroom or get something to eat or, or drink, go right ahead. <laughs> Oh, I'm 